In this example, a baseball is thrown upward at 25 meters per second, and we're asked, how long will it be before it returns to the ground? Now this one's a little bit tricky, but problems like this are always made a little bit easier with a diagram. So let's draw a little arrow representing the ball being thrown upward, and it goes up, and obviously it reaches a certain height, and it comes back down. And it's thrown up at 25 meters per second, and one thing to recognize is that in, in something like this, the flight is symmetrical. The, the path up is a mirror image of the path down. So if it is launched at 25 meters per second, it reaches a peak right up there at the top and is stationary just for a moment, and then it accelerates down and it hits the ground at a speed of 25 meters per second. Now we can solve this if we think only about the second half of the flight. So I'm going to focus my attention on the flight from the peak down to the ground. And I'll just make a note of that. Okay, I'll say consider the flight from the peak to the ground. And when I do that, I know something. Right here at the top, the velocity is zero. So if I'm thinking of the flight only from the peak to the ground, right here at the top is my initial point, and down here at the bottom is my final point. So the initial velocity, I'll say vi, is equal to zero. And the final velocity down here, vf, is 25 meters per second. You want to think of the final velocity here as the velocity with which it hits. Don't think to yourself, it hits to the ground and stops, and so the final speed is zero. That's true, it does do that, but we're concerned here with the flight of the baseball. So the final speed will be the speed that it hits the ground with. Now here's our equation. Acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity. That's the change in velocity divided by the time. And because I've set it up this way, where I'm only considering the second half of the flight. For that section of the flight, the initial velocity is zero, so this disappears from our equation again. And that's why I set it up that way, so that this equation would simplify to this, final velocity over time. And we're trying to find the time, t, so I rearrange this equation, and I get t is equal to the final velocity divided by the acceleration. This equation and this equation are identical in meaning, they're just arranged differently algebraically. We say that this one is solved for t. So t is the final velocity over the acceleration. Now let's put in the numbers and do the arithmetic. The final velocity is 25 meters per second. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we've, we've talked about the units here. The meters cancel. And this second here cancels one of those two, and that leaves us with seconds in the numerator. 25 divided by 9.8 comes out to 2.55, and that's 2.55 seconds. Now be careful. When you get to this point, it feels like you're done with the problem, but you're not quite. We just found the time for the second half of the flight. Remember, we were considering from the peak down. It went from a speed of 0 to a speed of 25. Those were the speeds we were using in this equation. If we have 0 here for the initial velocity and 25 for the final, then this time is the time that it took to get from 0 to 25, which is just the second half of the flight. So for the entire flight, if we want to know the time for the entire flight from start to finish, it will be twice that. So our answer is going to be the 2.55 seconds times 2, which is 5.1 seconds for our final answer. That's the time that the baseball is in the air.